so I just had to, we just finished the prayer worship. I'll answer a snippet probably at the end of this clip. We have to capture the bigger picture. What we saw that happened in this situation is John the Baptist struggling with his situation came to Jesus. And Jesus shifted his attention from what he was going through to what God was doing in the kingdom. And he said, go tell John. In essence, everything that John was believing God for is happening right now. Everything that he was praying for is happening right now. I was talking with Pastor Stephen, and he said, the one thing we got to understand is sometimes we miss that God is moving around me. And if I can't see that God is moving around me, then I'll miss the fact that God is moving for me. So as I close, I want to encourage you to zoom out and to see how God is moving around you. I want to encourage you today. You got to zoom out and see the bigger picture. I know you waiting on your miracle, but take a moment and celebrate the fact that if I zoom out, God is healing. If I zoom out, God is saving. If I zoom out, God is redeeming. It was just so good. I walked in on the second prayer point, but it was just everything I needed to hear. It's just basically don't give up. Don't keep your eyes. Don't lock, don't lose your focus on God. Keep your eyes locked in on him. Don't worry about everything that's going on around you. We may feel like he's not moving according to our timeline, but then that's when we have to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. God is always working and moving in our favor. Sometimes we just got to take a step back and just look. And then when we see that bigger picture, all that he's already done, then we're like, oh, he is moving. So let me just re realign my focus back on him. And I know just for me speaking, like for me personally speaking, God has done a miraculous work within me just from like him having, I had an encounter with him when I was in this relationship and I, I just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get out of it. And God just instructed me in my sleep, like get out, like you got to break up with him. And I did. And God had a line, a job already lined up for me because I wasn't working at that time. And from there, you know, I was only at that job for three months before I'd have the job that I got now. And like, you know, just not even about financial, you know, and like it's not about the financial because yes like I wasn't making as much money as I'm making now but just seeing how God had already ordained my steps like I was crying out in the middle of that relationship I, I felt like I was losing myself I felt like I wasn't gonna make it out because I just felt so alone depressed hopeless and God literally had an encounter with me in my sleep because that was the only way he can contact me or that was the only way he can like speak to me because it was so much going on in you know in the in the waking world and, you know, God pulled me out of, like, tarot. God pulled me out of um, New Age. God pulled me out of all of that. Like, I didn't have a desire to do that no more. I feel like when I did that stuff, my life was even more chaotic. I didn't feel peace. That stuff didn't bring me peace. It brought me more chaos and more confusion. And God had an encounter with me and just was like, you know, just you got to move. Leave that relationship. And from that, just I had jobs like God, like the job. And I was getting to know God on that job and, you know, praying and doing just all the things. And just uh, i feel like i can't even get the words out. all i'm trying to say is that god is just amazing god is good and i just kept saying all this week like oh god you bought me a mighty long way you bought me a mighty long way and i know the old people in churches to say that i grew up baptist so i know like in a baptist church where you know the older folks down so i'm like you know lord you bought me a mighty long way but i really felt that this morning i could just just pray about that and just thank god like you really bought me a mighty long way god like i was not supposed to be here like <laughs> I'm not supposed to be here, but I am here. And God is still bringing me through stuff. And he's using me to inspire people around me. Just people I never thought I'd be able to meet at, like, on the job. Like, I've never been a person to make friends at work because I'm just, like, it's strictly work. But, like, there were situations of spiritual warfare where God just, he allowed me to get close with certain people. And from that, like, I feel like my relationship with God has strengthened. But then he also allowed me... He also used me to help those people to strengthen their relationship with God. Despite how your past may look, despite how you may have treated people in the past, despite the mistakes you made, God has forgiven you for those things. And God is like, I want to give you all that I have for you. You deserve good things. You deserve to be loved in a way that's not harmful, that's not toxic, that's not chaotic. You deserve to be at peace. 
God has given me so much peace since I got rebaptized twice. Like, I messed up the first go around. I feel like, dang. But I was also to realize, like, it's not about your works and your doings. Like, God still loves you regardless. And that's something I'm constantly trying to rewire my mind on. God wants you to have a genuine relationship with him. And each and every day, God has just been revealing that to me. Like, it's not about your good works. Yes, I appreciate it. But that's not why I love you. I love you because you're my child. I love you because you're just amazing. And you are a representation of me. You are a, you are a split image of me you are an image of the lord you are the image of the most high like and it's crazy so just reflecting on like god has really brought me a mighty long way y'all even to the point where i don't indulge in a lot of things that i used to indulge in it's not easy you know being a christian it's not easy following god but it's like when you truly have a love for and a passion for your relationship with him and just who he is as a person you're gonna want to do better regardless it and i think also god is calling me to stop being afraid to you know speak about his goodness He's using you to you know talk about his kingdom to talk about his greatness and his goodness and his mercy I just want to let y'all know like god is so good and i just i'm so thankful i came to pray and worship this morning like it's so good and i i'm just thankful like god has brought me a mighty long way and it's like sometimes i don't even realize how far i've come and now that i think about it i had a you know god had put a vision on my he gave me a dream don't panic you relax the water will bring you back up if you're listen i know that video was made for educational purposes but there was an entire word wrapped into that just stay around to the end of the video just give me a little in life situations we kind of go through a lot of different things where sometimes we have no idea how we're going to make it out of the situation sometimes we have knowledge of where we're going and then sometimes we don't but in the season where you don't know where you're going you feel like you you just put yourself in a deeper hole that you can't even imagine trust god don't go into the situation looking around you, looking at your physical, right? Because that is the enemy trying to deter you from where God is going to take you. And if you are so focused on what's going on around you and your situation in front of you, you're literally are going to drown. God spoke this to me in a dream. God revealed this to me in a dream where I was going down a different route. It wasn't the plan that I originally anticipated. And I basically just lost all sight of direct. And like the instructor in this dream, I fell into a pool of water and actually the ocean. And mind y'all, and I remember saying in my dream, I cannot swim. How am I going? How am I going to get out of the water? How am I going to make it out alive? Because in baby, in real life, I'll be panicking in that water. I ain't going to hold you. But in the midst of that dream, God told me in my mind, he said, do not panic. Because if you panic, you're going to sink. You're not going to float and you're not going to make it to shore. That's like the same thing when we go through life's trials and tribulations. God wants you to focus on him, not the problem. Because if you take your energy and focus it on the problem, what are you going to do? You're going to sink. You're going to drown. But God gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding and when you choose to lean into god in that moment when you choose to say surrender to the problem like okay god i don't know how i'm gonna get through it but i'm not gonna panic i'm not gonna focus on what i see rock right because we walk by faith and not by sight i want to choose to trust in you it is in that moment when you truly surrender to what god is doing in your life and where you are in that situation that's where he's gonna allow you to flow back up to the surface and be able to swim to shore basically Basically, y'all, if y'all didn't get nothing from that video, when life hits you hard, don't panic. Just trust in God. Pray to him. Let him guide you, and he will never lead you astray. But just thinking about the disciples in the middle of the boat, in the middle of the ocean, Jesus was asleep on the boat, and they're, like, waking up panicking, like, do you not feel the storm? He's like, how oh, have you little faith? Like, why are you so concerned? Be at peace. Go to sleep. Chill out. It's going to be fine. Jesus was on that boat, calm as can be sleeping and that makes me wonder like god i'm just realizing god was telling me when things around you are chaotic when it seems like you know the promise ain't coming don't panic stay calm focus on me keep your eyes locked in on me because when you do that you won't be like jesus it's just like it don't bother me it don't faze me the enemy's going to test you with certain things and let me tell you something y'all i've been some days i had to take a step back and be like oh i see this, this is an attack and i'm gonna get better with that but God is just like, just be at peace. Choose to be at peace. Even when Peter walked on the water, I think it was Peter. If it's not, I'll correct myself. But I believe it was Peter. He asked, you know, are you the one true God? You know, help me walk on water. And he's like, okay, keep Jesus, like, keep your eyes locked on me. And Peter started walking. And as soon as he took his focus off Jesus, man, he started sinking. He started crying out. And Jesus was like, oh, you had little faith. Where's your faith? If you would have just stayed focused on me and locked in, you would have made it across that water. The same way Jesus is speaking to Peter about crossing over to the water, the same way he's speaking to me and you. Don't look at your problems. Don't focus on them. Keep your eyes locked in on Jesus. You're going to make it. You're going to get through. So, yeah, just thinking about my that dream that God gave me. And just like, if you stay calm in the middle of the ocean, God is going to get you to shore. And in that dream, I got to shore. 
So I'm just saying to y'all, stay in faith. Remember, keep your eyes locked in on Jesus. Keep your eyes locked in on the good Lord. And he will never leave or forsake you. He will make sure that you get to where you need to go. And his presence is always with you. Even when it feels like it's heavy, his presence is with you. So open your Bible, listen to a sermon, listen to a Christian podcast, listen to some worship music, or just get around a friend that you know is really heavily into God and just let them speak to you. Let them pray over you. Pray over yourself, lay hands on yourself because God has already given us the authority that in Jesus' name, we are healed. We are, you know, we are able to do all things. Like, it's already been done. Jesus defeated the grave. We serve a miraculous God, y'all. So I'm about to I'm about to head out. But yeah, thanks so much for subscribing and tuning in. And I'll see you in the next one.